Our guest in studio is Miss Virginia out of Martinsburg, West Virginia, Katie Rose. Katie, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm, I'm well, but not as well as you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Tell me about uh, the night and getting crowned and your reaction and all that good stuff. So the night I won, it was very surreal. I've actually competed in the program for seven years. And so I knew that I had worked really, really hard. And I was here just a few weeks ago telling you about everything that I had done and, you know, my community in Loudoun mm -hmm. County. And I just worked very hard. And then they started dwindling us down from 12 to 5. And then they started calling the fourth runner up, the third runner up, the second runner up. And then I'm standing there and it's me with someone else very close to here who, was, who represented the Apple blossom festival and the two of us were standing there at the very end and i thought to myself oh my goodness i really can win this thing it might happen it might actually happen this time and then they called the first runner up and then i just don't remember anything after that for about 15 seconds That's i awesome. just was completely completely totally surprised and very excited what's the closest you'd gotten previously third runner up um, so I actually competed, what a lot of people don't know is I competed in West Virginia for a couple years when I had eligibility in West Virginia before going to school in Virginia. Mm -hmm. I was third runner up to Miss West Virginia. By the way, I just want to give a quick shout out and congratulations to Carrington Childress, our new Miss West Virginia. I'm excited to meet her in a couple weeks um, at Miss America Orientation. Um, but in addition to that, um, I was third runner up in West Virginia, made the top five a couple times. Then I went over to Virginia and placed in the top ten a couple times. And so this year was my first time breaking the top five in Virginia. And Virginia had kind to become my new home for seven years because I went to undergrad at George Mason University and then law school at the University of Richmond and so that's where I decided to compete and I just was top 10 a couple times and then it finally happened. What do you suppose pushed you over the top this time? I just think my whole outlook and mindset going into it, I, I looked at it this year not prepping for a competition, but bettering myself and doing what can I take away from this experience. And so I was just very gracious and very grateful to have all the opportunities to work with my board of directors, to work with my community service initiative, which is ending domestic violence, and just just kind of thinking what can I take away from this experience to make me a better version of Katie. And so I wasn't crown chasing. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, if I don't win, it's the end of the world. It was just, I, I did this to better myself this year. And I think that was the difference. How did that help you during the interview segments? I think it helped a lot because during the interview, I, they just got really personal. They asked about my personal experience with working with my platform. They asked me about what it was like to go to school. They even asked me what I thought about artificial intelligence and how I whether I think it's taking over the world or not. So I really felt like this year they got to know me and it was the best version of me. And I actually prayed a lot before going into this saying, you know, if this is meant for me, this opportunity is not going to pass. The right questions will be asked, the right answers will be given, and it'll be exactly how it's supposed to be. And so that's what happened. What was the reaction of the other contestants after your victory? Um, when I won, I got to watch the video back and they were just jumping up and down in the background and clapping for me. And I've never had so much support from a group of young women ever in my entire life. And that's what I love about the Miss America organization is, you know, the new CEO wants to take it over and say that sisterhood is a fundamental part of the program. Mm -hmm. And I really felt that this year. Some of the girls I'm still friends with, I had to move to Roanoke right after I was crowned. And uh, some of the girls reached out to me and said, you know, it can get really lonely down here. Let's get together for dinner. Let's go to a movie. Let's, you know, awesome. let's just hang out and be friends. And so I've really felt the support in my community this year. All right. I got to know. Mm -hmm. I've known your mom for a long time. <laughs> what was her reaction? So that night, she was actually very very calm and collected and I even asked her because they have like a little after party after you know your crown to celebrate the new winner and mm -hmm. to you know celebrate the week and all of the hard work that all of the women have put into this and I said mom are you okay because she was just very you know just straight face and she said I'm very very happy for you but I'm just taking it all in and days later when I moved to Roanoke I started crying and I said mom well this is it I'm starting my new chapter and I'll be back when I can be back but this is it and she said this emotion you're feeling right now is what I was processing the night you won I knew that this was going to be a time that you know this was a journey that you were going to have to take alone and that I couldn't come with you and it's okay it's part of life and I'm very excited for you and I can't wait to watch you and everything you accomplish so she's still my best friend she's still very close to me but I think she just was processing all of it at, at the at that moment Billy yeah you have a crown in front of you I do w would you take your earphones off just a second okay. and put the crown on absolutely <laughs> so I love putting this thing on every sure. time I get that to that is so nice yeah that's so attractive yeah now is it yours to keep permanently it or is, is it? okay at so, the end of my year of service yeah. I will get to keep it yeah, very nice. yeah. Okay. 
Now, what happens next? You're in Roanoke mm -hmm. to do what? And then you start preparing for the Miss American contest. So give us a timeline, if you will, for the next few weeks. Few yeah, months. so yeah. Um, immediately they moved me to Roanoke. The next morning after I was crowned, I had a breakfast with all of the former Miss Virginias, which is, a, which is a big tradition. And after you do your morning breakfast, they give you the keys to the car, the keys to the apartment, and say, here you go, move your stuff in. And so I moved in that next morning, and Roanoke is supposed to be home base for me for the next year. So I'll be based out of Roanoke and traveling all across the, the Commonwealth, doing appearances, going to YMCA clubs, going to schools, um, going to domestic violence shelters if my schedule permits. And then in September, September Labor Day weekend, I'll be going to uh, Miss America orientation, which will be in Columbus, Ohio. So I'll be there for three days to meet all of the other contestants and uh, learn a little bit more about what the competition entails. And then and next year, I will come home from that, actually. I'll come home from that and do a lot of community service work again. And then the school tour will start in Virginia, the Alcohol Beverage Control. We partner with them and talk to our younger kids about building and maintaining healthy relationships and making healthy choices. And after I do that, I will go to the Miss America competition either in January or February of next year tentatively because we don't know what the dates of the competition yet or where it's going to be I, no um, yeah. but the CEO has hinted that it may be somewhere warm okay. <laughs> yes. well this year is that's easy that's easy yes. Yes. pretty much anywhere <laughs> yeah uh, now your schedule I assume is dictated to you mm -hmm. you have someone that will plan it out for you if you should be fortunate enough and I hope you are to win Miss America uh, they will have a schedule as well the Miss America schedule will preempt the Miss Virginia schedule it will so okay. what will happen is if I were to be lucky enough knock on wood to win Miss America yeah. you know there's a lot of luck here Rob I was here as Miss Loudoun County and then I became Miss Virginia so yeah. maybe we can, maybe we could speak it into existence yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that after that I will come I will have a if I win I would have a Miss America homecoming where I would come home and crown my first runner-up the new Miss Virginia mm -hmm. so she would take over my responsibilities and obligations as Miss Virginia see, okay. and then I would fulfill the role of Miss America now, I'm sure a lot goes into the selection. Uh, obviously, you're a very, very attractive mm -hmm. lady. You're very Thank poised. You. Uh, but you're one of the most, I think I said this last time, you're one of the most articulate young persons I've ever listened to. Thank you. Uh, you are very, very smooth and skilled at, uh, in making your points. How much did that play in the role of selection? Do you have any idea? Well, I can give you a number if that okay. helps. It was yes. about 30% of my score. Um, that's the first thing that the judges see. And so, you know, ultimately they say that that can affect everything else because mm. if they like you and they think you can handle the job of Miss Virginia, which is a lot of public speaking, sure. then, you know, the rest is kind of reevaluating the whole package. The judges then have the opportunity after off of based off of points after all of the contestants have competed in everything they get together and they get to talk about everything and give you a composite score saying on a scale of one to ten I think this girl can be Miss Virginia so 30 percent is the weight of the points but then once the points are kind of all tabulated and calculated then the judges can say you know I really like this girl even though maybe she was second in points I know she'll do the best job as Miss Virginia so mm -hmm. I'm going to give her a 10 and that carries over into your final night of competition for the communication aspect yes yes mm -hmm. okay now have you uh, uh, taken formal instruction for communication for skill again I am struck by the fact how articulate you are have you had formal training or is this something that just comes her, her comes mom's a natural? lawyer and a judge Bill. I, I, I know that <laughs> I know that, but, but I still, I'm, uh, uh, you handle yourself like someone that has had quite a bit of formal education in communication. Have you? Um, well, yes. So when I started competing as a teen in the Miss Outstanding Teen program, yeah. now it's just Miss America's Teen, but it used to be yeah. Outstanding Teen, I worked with a man by the name of Don Baker, who has since passed away, but he worked with several Miss Americas, and he didn't teach you how to be scripted. He didn't teach you what to say, but what he did teach you was how to be yourself and how to, you know, he used to always say, you think you die. And I never understood what that meant, but he said, while they're asking you questions, you need to have visual pictures in your head. So by the minute the question's finished, you can articulate a response right away. And he broke it down and he had a science behind it and he was very, very well versed in communications. And so he gave me the tools, I think, to be confident in myself, to be able to articulate everything that I want to be able to say. Um, and, and, and he created several Miss Americas that that came from him and during his time. And so I think that I had that. And then before I went to law school, I worked in communications on a presidential campaign. And so I had that kind of formalized 
training and experience to be able to kind of hone in on my communication skills and be able to apply that in, in a more workforce setting. Yeah. You come across as being so genuine. Uh, there is a little bit of, and I'm saying this in full sincerity, there's a little bit of artificiality in everybody. Uh, the, the skill, I think, is being able to mask that artificiality to come genuine, and you do a masterful job of it. Thank this. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bill, I, on the other hand, am a little offended that you think I'm artificial while I'm doing this uh, these jo this job with you, Bill. I'm deeply hurt by that. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, you should be, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Rose is our guest. She is uh, Miss Virginia out of Martinsburg, uh, class of 15? Yes. Yeah, 2015. What did you take from your uh, Martinsburg, Berkeley County education into college and law school and ultimately the track you're on in life? I think what I took out of it was more of the the people skills that I learned in high school. I was, you know, my mom, I, bless her heart, I love her very dearly, but I was very sheltered growing up. And so I think that having the opportunity to be around like-minded people, different people, and be challenged in my point of views and my perspectives gave me the opportunity to go into college and then law school understanding that it's okay to have a different mindset or a different point of view than everybody else and so I think that that's what I learned from my high school experience and you know I had friends from you know the most the popular cool kids to the not so cool kids and I just I really really loved being able to talk to different people about different things and so I think that that's what I carried with me all right a couple of quick questions for you one what kind of car did they give you they give you a Kia Soul <laughs> what color is it it's red I would expect nothing less. Yes. <laughs> right. um, uh, two, uh, what's your favorite movie? Um, off the top of my head, I would probably have to say The Titanic. I've always loved that movie. Um, it's always been one of my favorites. But I have heard that the Barbie movie came out, and I'm going to have to watch it. So <laughs> there, I might have some competition coming uh, up. Dylan, I saw, did I see a tweet from you that you went to the Barbie movie? Was that, yeah, did you like it? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Dylan gives it a thumbs up. <laughs> did he wear pink? No, he said no. Did, mm. did you see Oppenheimer too? Yeah, he gave that a thumbs up. So he did the double dip this weekend when yeah. it picked up over $200 million between the two movies. Yeah, do you want to see Oppenheimer as well? Sure. Why not? You know what's funny is that some of the girls that I follow on Instagram and stuff like made like Barbenheimer shirts yeah. and were wearing those to the Barbie movie. So I, I presume they went to the other movie. I don't know. But a lot of people did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, next, the, uh, the first runner-up, second runner-up, third mm -hmm. runner-up, do they do anything with Miss Virginia during the course of the year? You know, they don't have anything scheduled, but like I said, if I were to win Miss America, God willing, then, you know, the first runner-up would fulfill my obligations as Miss Virginia, and then I would take over as Miss America. But there are a lot of opportunities for me as Miss Virginia when I'm traveling across the Commonwealth to go to a lot of these girls' hometowns mm -hmm. to where they are. And like I said, there really is a sisterhood. And so sometimes they may say, hey, oh, can I tag along on that appearance? Or do you want to meet up for coffee beforehand? And so I will still have a lot of opportunities to network and, and, and get to spend time with these ladies. And in addition to that, um, a lot of these girls are still eligible to compete again for the title of Miss Virginia. So mm -hmm. I hopefully will be crowning a lot yeah. of them in this upcoming season to give them another chance to to follow their dreams is there an age requirement age limitation there is so you have to be 28 by the state competition okay. so if you've turned 29 by the state competition but you're still 28 at the yeah. local you you can't compete. and how many uh ladies can uh, participate in the miss virginia contest including myself there were 24 this year 24 okay. now, you've won miss virginia so you're yes. you're done you can't be miss virginia again i right? can never be miss virginia again can you be miss another state no so you get one. The way that they look at it is you have one chance to go to Miss America. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, this closes the book on this after this year? Is that yeah. kind of sad or is it time to, you know, you're like, OK, I did it. I think it's a little bit of both. I think on the one hand, this has shaped my early 20s and made me the person that I am today and has mm -hmm. given me the opportunity to stay physically fit, stay accountable by being educated on what's happening around the world. And so I think on the one hand, this is an opportunity for me to follow my dreams and compete for Miss America. But on the other hand, I think it's time. I think I'm ready to come home and be a lawyer and make a difference in my community and follow my dreams in that respect. But I will say I'm going out with a bang because my last pageant ever will be Miss America. That's pretty cool. Now, yeah. you were to work with Matt Harvey in the Jefferson County Prosecuting mm -hmm. Attorney's Office. Obviously, that's on hold now. 
it is on hold for the foreseeable future just because, you know, you're in a different sometimes county, city, region of Virginia every 24 to 48 hours sometimes. And sure. so, you know, it's it's a busy schedule and it's really hard to do that and fulfill a full-time job. So the Miss Virginia organization is taking very good care of me this year. I don't know if you know this or not, but I received $22,500 in scholarships by competing. Congratulations. And th thank you. And in addition to that, they do give me a stipend to be able to cover all of my expenses that I need for food and gas and stuff like that. So I will be well taken care of this year. I won't be going hungry. Uh, but my hopes are to go back to Matt Harvey after this year. Do you Matt? have a chaperone when you have to go places? I do not. So they used to have a traveling companion that traveled full-time with Miss Virginia, but that doesn't happen anymore. I do have some security in Roanoke and some bodyguards and stuff like that that do live maybe within five minutes of the apartment complex that they've that they've given me an apartment in. And so I do feel very safe. And then they've given us a lot of education on how to remain safe and to mm -hmm. stay out of certain areas. I remember after I was crowned, I went with one of our security guards just around Roanoke to learn some of the areas, maybe not to go after 7 yeah. p.m. and maybe where to stay away from and which grocery shops to shop at and which ones not to. So I feel like I'm gonna have a safe year and a fun year. Katie, you, you're wearing the Miss Virginia uh, sash. Uh, yes. sash, thank you. But we still consider you a Miss West Virginia. <laughs> uh, so are the, how many ladies have participated in the Miss America contest from West Virginia? You know, I don't really know that much about West Virginia girls that competed this year. I do know, like I said, for Virginia, there were 24 girls yeah. that competed for the title of Miss Virginia. Yeah. And although that, um, you know, West Virginia has been my home, it kind of created yeah. me and, you know, sent yeah. me off to college. But, you know, Virginia did really become my home. Yeah. It did. I, I'm sorry, I did not state my question right. How many ladies from West Virginia have uh, participated in the Miss America contest? Ah. Uh, I really don't know. I know uh, there's I, at least one from uh, uh, from Berkeley County. Yeah, so this year there is obviously a Miss West Virginia, yeah, yeah. and she will go to Miss America this year. Sure I don't know. Have, yeah, I don't yeah. know how many. I know I'm the 70th Miss Virginia. Okay. So I don't know where that puts yeah, me yeah. in terms of you're, West Virginia. You're right. So every Miss West Virginia has participated. Yes. That, yeah. You're okay. That's, yeah. That's obvious. So. Did you uh, seek any advice or counsel from Tiffany Lawrence? You know, I did not, but when I was very early on and, you know, competing as a teen and even as a Miss in West Virginia, I did a couple of mock interviews with her and she told me, and she gave me some really good advice because I didn't receive any training from her this year for Miss Virginia, but I've always looked to her as always being a Miss America. She is just always so put together, so well-spoken, so articulate, and I always wanted to be just like her. And I did a mock interview with her and I was, I think, 19 years old. And she told me, she said, Katie, I would hire you tomorrow, but I don't see you, you know, you're missing something in terms of Miss, like what the Miss America organization wants and what they need. And I want to get to know Katie more. You know, you're able to, like you said earlier, have these, these great answers, but I'm not really getting to know who Katie is. And so I think that goes back to my point that this year, you know, maybe she did help in a way because I really focused on just growing and being the best version of myself. And that seems to be what worked. Very nice. Uh, about a minute left, Katie. Anything that you'd like to say to our audience or your friends out there, family, yeah. whatever? I would just like to say I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to have the support from my community, and I'm so excited to go to Miss America, and this has been a lifelong dream of mine to, to be Miss Virginia and to have this opportunity, and I know that there are so many other girls out there probably looking to me and, and wondering if they can do it one day, and so my message to them is that they can and that they have worth and that they can do anything they set their minds to. Very nice. Congratulations once again. Thank you. This is pretty awesome. And uh, uh, wish you a great and adventurous year. And of course, because we've established a precedent here today, we know you'll win Miss America. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Obviously, yeah. That's, yeah. We've got and the momentum going. Yeah, so we could be added to Katie's list of people that have oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, made a contribution. We here. could be security when she's in Martinsburg. <laughs> and no promises, but I will do my absolute best to make sure that you guys get on the schedule if I were to win Miss America. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Hey, uh, and when is that again? It's next year, January, February. All right, very nice. Well, congratulations. Thank congratulations, you. Katie. You're a you. marvelous ambassador. So thank you. Thank you. Katie Rose at 9.57, final minute next.